Brazil, Canada, and the United States. Meanwhile, Argentina uh, in the process uh, of, of women's soccer in their country. They're looking to the 2022 Copa America as they try to uh, continue the momentum from a successful 2019 World Cup where they exceeded expectations. Katja Koraleva is the referee today. Her day job, she's a physician's assistant in San Jose, has been on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is a nice day in Orlando, Florida, 86 degrees, significant humidity as well at Exploria Stadium. All six matches of the She Believes Cup will be at the same venue, Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida. That change made, of course, because of the pandemic that we are in. And it will begin with a great rivalry, South American rivalry. Brazil and Argentina are underway. The 2021 She Believes Cup is underway from Orlando. Brazil coming to the United States, coming to the She Believes Cup for the first time in this country with uh, their not new anymore manager, but for United States American viewers will be very familiar. Pia Suntaga became Brazil's head coach after the 2019 World Cup. Her process with the national team, of course, uh, was put on hold during the pandemic, but now uh, has restarted, and uh, Pia trying to lead Brazil into the Olympics for Argentina. Uh, they, as we mentioned, trying to look to, to uh, 2022, to the Copa America, where they will try to qualify for the 2023 World Cup. Let's look now at the Brazil lineup. Daniel, what do you make of what Pia Suntaga has put out today? Well, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm eager to see Alini in goal. She's somebody who's very good with her feet, and I think that goalkeeping position is a little bit up for debate for Pia Suntaga. Keep an eye on the two central defenders, Tainara and Rafaela. I'm eager to see how they combine and their chemistry. No Formiga in the midfield, so how is Brazil going to look in the center of the park? And then Beatrice and Dabinha, two dynamic forwards and Brazilian team that is known for its flair. What will they bring here today? On the flip side, Argentina has had to suffer quite a few positive COVID tests in the last few days, and it's affected their backline and goalkeeping position most notably. But the young Sofia Braun out of Gonzaga University in the midfield alongside Vanessa Santana and Lorena Benitez. And then up front, Sole Jaimez is their target, their center forward. They're looking to find her feet. Foul called to Brazil will have a free kick as Beatrice was taken out by the Argentinian keeper. And I'm expecting to see Brazil to continue to get forward here. A late tackle. To me, I think she has a right to be frustrated. To me, worthy of a yellow card. The goalkeeper coming out well outside of her box opportunity here for Brazil. Marta and Dabinha over the set piece for Brazil. Solana Pereira, 21 years old, just her seventh cap for Argentina. Her backup at the World Cup. Benina Correa, their star goalkeeper at the World Cup, unavailable for she believes. Here's the service from Brazil. It's headed up and over. Pereira came. She misread it. It was an opportunity. And it's, uh, looks like it's going to be a corner for Brazil. Well, Dabinia is serving the ball in here. Certainly somebody who consistently serves a quality ball into the box. And I think Brazil is going to need to continue to do this throughout the game. As you mentioned, Pereira is a new goalkeeper, has, doesn't have a lot of experience. And that communication is going to be a challenge for Argentina if they don't sort it out early. A corner from Brazil. This time dealt with by Argentina. And they will try to break too far for Shamila Rodriguez. This is the first match of 2021 for both of these teams. For Argentina, it's been a long time since they've had a match. 464 days. Their last game was on November 12th, 2019. They didn't play uh, at all uh, in 2020 before the pandemic. Then, of course, that put a pause on all the plans they had for last year. And now getting back at it. 
for Brazil. They were able to get some games in at the end of 2020. A couple matches with Ecuador where they just dominated. But this is their first one of the year. Well, you got to think that break for Argentina hurt them maybe even more than most because, as you referenced, Jake, they kind of overachieved in the World Cup in 2019 and had a lot of momentum to potentially build upon. They tied Japan, they tied Scotland, almost squeaked their way into the knockout round, just had a 1-0 loss to England. And so you thought, hmm, maybe Argentina can continue to take steps forward. And then the COVID-19 pandemic really put things on pause for them. And it'll be interesting to see if they can come together after nearly, what, 18 months without having been united and had the opportunity to play. Here comes Argentina. Nunez, Rodriguez, Benitez. Brazil deals with it. Argentina ranked 31st in the world. They are by far the lowest ranked of the four teams at the She Believes Cup. Brazil, they're tied for eighth. And here they come. It will be... Another corner kick for the Brazilians. Brazil tied with Canada at eighth. The United States, of course, the top-ranked team in the world. One of the things I'm looking for in this game from Brazil is not only these one-on-one -on -one matchups, which we've seen a couple of times, particularly on this left flank for Brazil, but in addition, I'm looking for 2v1 matchups. Can Brazil find times when they can play connected, play so close together and overwhelm channels, overwhelm single defenders for Argentina. I think that's something that Pia Suntaga can bring to this team. She talked to us yesterday about introducing more organization into the attack, wanting attackers to play tight and close together so they can combine. I think that's something that I'm eager to see if she has been able to implement thus far and what that development will look like heading towards the Olympics for Brazil. Pia Suntaga managed the U.S. from 2007 to 2012 in Sweden from 2012 to 2017, combining the traits of all three countries, she told us. Here's Marta's service, punched away, but only as far as Dabinha. And a save from Pereira as Tainara, the center back, put it right at the Argentinian keeper. I like that service in by Marta. You can see she's putting it right on top of the goalkeeper, forcing Pereira to make that save. She punches it away, but not far enough. The on-rushing Dabinia serves that ball brilliantly to the back post. I think she makes that right decision, and that's part of what makes Dabinia so special. In attack, she has a flair, but she also consistently makes quality decisions and brings other players into the game. Dabinia of the North Carolina Courage in the NWSL. Such an exciting player. One of, if not the most electrifying in the NWSL. She's won two titles with North Carolina. She was the championship game MVP in 2019. And she has flourished under Pia Suntaga. Ten goals in the... 13 matches that Pia Suntaga has been in charge for Brazil. She is their leading scorer in the Pia Suntaga era. And I really do wonder if a player like Dabinia, and additionally an attacker like Beatrice, who we've been talking about, or Ludmila, who are going to be those next personality players for Brazil? We've talked so long. We've talked for over a decade about Marta, about Cristiani, and what will that handoff of the torch look like, if you will, over the next decade for Brazil? And can Pia Suntaga help in that transition? She talked to us yesterday, very frankly, about needing youth in this team. Look, it's still led by Marta, by Cristiani, by Formiga, who's not here because PSG did not release her for this tournament. As Pereira sends it clear. And Pia Suntaga told us we really need to get a younger team coming up. This generation has been so successful, but it's not going to continue long term. It can't. She said we really need to find some younger players. There's a couple in this roster that they're really excited about on the bench today. Giovanna and Ivana that she pointed out specifically. She said we need to better identify young players. And it's going to take a while. She kind of joked to us. Maybe it's going to be the next coach after her that's going <laughs> to really reap the rewards of the development that they're going to do with the young players, the next generation of Brazilians. But look, Marta, Cristiani, Formiga, I mean, they're still playing at a high level. Here is Marta. Argentina trying to get it clear.
Tamires started all four games in the World Cup for Brazil at left back. Named to the South American team of the decade recently. One of seven Brazilians in that team. Four are on this roster. Marta, Cristiani, and Dabinha. When Brazil is playing at its best, the chemistry between Tamiris at the left back position and Marta ahead of her in the midfield is really special to watch. So keep an eye and see if Brazil can exploit that left flank. Here's Shamila Rodriguez for Argentina. And it's right at Alini who's able to make the save for Brazil. But early on, it has been Rodriguez on that left flank that has been the focal point for Argentina. And there's been some opportunities for Argentina on this left flank. I was excited to watch Rodriguez because thinking back to the World Cup, their left midfielder, Florencia Bonsaguna, was such a force, particularly in that Scotland game, their last game in which they tied 3-3. Three to three. And so can Shamila Rodriguez step into that role? I like the flair she's brought. I like her not only going vertically, but as we saw in that last opportunity, her willingness to cut inside onto that right foot and get the shot off. So she's not only going vertical, but she's looking central as well. It's so much more difficult to defend uh, a player who can go both up and down and inside. You have to decide when to pass her on or when to track her yourself. Well, you mentioned Bon Segundo. She was the hero of that 3-3 draw, that wild match against Scotland in the World Cup for Argentina. Scored the second goal and the third on a retaken penalty. She's not in with this group. There's there's been a lot of public drama with Argentina. Some of the better players from the national team, led by Estefania Benini. Uh, dis uh, disagreements with their coach, Carlos Barrelo. And a group of players from that World Cup team not here, including Pan Segunda, uh, Estefania Benini, Ruth Bravo, and Belen Botasa as well. Argentina. Drawing the foul there, we spoke with Natalie Junkos, who is uh, an American-born Argentinian, about that as the first yellow card of the match is shown to Beatrice for Brazil. First player to go into the book. A 27-year-old striker. Let's now bring in our Fox Sports Rules Analyst, Dr. Joe Macknick. Dr. Joe, a yellow here, not one earlier. What are your thoughts? That's an interesting uh, a group of decisions for the referee today. In the first instance, when the goalkeeper had come off the line to make that foul, I like that as a yellow card, even as Danielle said, because not only was it a reckless challenge, but it stopped a promising attack with the goalkeeper so far out of, the, of her goal. In this instance, this is a yellow card for me as well because the attacking player straight legs the defender as she's trying to clear the ball. And that's always a very, very dangerous play, sometimes winding up with an injury for the defender. Thanks, Dr. Joe. So it's Beatrice in the book after Pereira avoided yellow earlier. And again, it's Jamila Rodriguez for Argentina. Now Sole Jaimes. Looking for Clarissa Uber, and they didn't quite get it right. And I think that's a good example of how Argentina can attack quickly and effectively, especially as they're weathering the storm of attacks like Brazil that we've seen thus far in the first 13 minutes. How can they look to find Sole Jaimes, and how can she get up, win the ball, take it down back to goal, and then Shamila Rodriguez or Clarissa Uber running off of her, tucking underneath and looking for that second ball. Direct for Tabinha. And a shoe for Brazil. Adriana. Wide for Tamires. Service into the box. Might make it to Tabinha. Adriana. She gave it away. Looking for shoe. Rodriguez. For Argentina, plays for Boca Juniors in what is a newly professional domestic league in Argentina. And Just became fully professional in 2019 as part of an initiative to, to grow the game, to get progress in women's soccer in Argentina. As now Marta is called for the foul as she disagrees with the decision. This is how you know that Marta may have been in this game, but she is still able to compete and battle 
at this level. She is a competitor. She is fired up. And when we talked to Pia, she talked about the fact that she was eager and excited to be able to work with Marta. She's coached against her for many, many years. And you got to think that, that two women like that involved in the game just bring out the best in each other. And you've got to think that Marta really is probably inspired and motivated to continue her play under the leadership of Pia. I think it's a good cultural fit, too. I mean, Pia just brings this joy to the game. I mean, she busts out her guitar. She sings with the players. She's willing to laugh at herself. And when Brazil is at its best, they are playing with the same kind of joy. So you've got to think that both of those can help each other in, in that way and potentially tactically and tactically, technically as well evolve and grow as the game continues to do the same. And Pia and Marta have a connection with Sweden as well. Marta has spent right. about a decade of her career in Sweden. Pia Suntag is native country. Pia Suntag told us her Portuguese is not very good, so she doesn't communicate great with all the players, but with Marta, the ability to speak in Swedish and, and English as well uh, has helped that communication. And you, know, you talked about the joy that, that Pia brings and, and that Marta will have maybe playing under Pia. Well, Pia seemed to have that same joy coaching Marta. She told us she's been around some great players, big players, notably when she was with the United States. Uh, but now she said, I'm one yard from Marta when she plays the ball. It's fantastic. And she said it was great to be around such a player. And a player who always tries her best. That's always fighting as well, even uh, at this stage in her career when she's achieved so much. little example here you can tell we haven't talked about it a ton but this is brazil argentina rivalry and even though it might be in a she believes tournament on the continent of north america and florida there there's a battle that goes on between these two teams in the same way that the united states and canada later today are going to have that extra little bite because you're playing against your border rival and it's been physical in the first 17 minutes already one yellow card could have been another Here's Sole Jaimes for Argentina. Now Shamila Rodriguez. She has some time looking for Uber. Dealt with by Brazil. <laughs> Brazil gives it away. Julia. They give it right back though to, to the Brazilians. And then it's out into touch. Talk about this rivalry, compare it to another one. Seven o'clock tonight here on FS1 USA versus Canada. The United States looking towards the Olympics, looking towards Tokyo. Decisions that will need to be made for that roster. Canada is, is missing a lot of players, either because of injury or because they couldn't get released, did not get released by their European clubs. So some new faces, some fresh faces for the Canadians against uh, a United States side that is stacked with star power as always. Can Rodriguez get there? She's unable to. Like it, It's clear, Danielle, I think what Argentina is trying to do in the attack. How do they get a little more effective maybe getting in into the final third? I think they need one or two more passes. So they've got to be able to find Sole Jaimes. But Shamila Rodriguez, as soon as she gets the ball, she's looking to attack quickly. And can she do that from time to time? But then can there be moments when she maybe puts her foot on the ball, looks to connect to a midfielder who's coming up behind her? And can Argentina get more numbers around the ball in attack so it's not just 1v4 or 2v4 against the entire back line of Brazil? Here is Rodriguez. She'll be unable to chase it down. You saw the possession numbers heavily Brazil. That's certainly what we would have expected coming into this. On, on the other side of things, now, how does Brazil take that possession uh, and, and turn that into goals? Well, I, I think Brazil needs to, as Pia referenced to us yesterday, how can they get more numbers around the ball? How can they look to combine? How can they look to, to build that chemistry and that organization in attack? It's so tricky for, for a coach like Pia in that you want to... Brazil continue to have the flair that they have and you don't want to dampen that but you do want to layer in a little bit more organization a little bit more structure and I think actually the US has the same challenge when I think to Vlaco. Um, I think how do you continue to 
inspire the U.S. to continue to attack quickly and relentlessly, but also build in patience at times. It, it's a delicate balance that Pia and Vlatko have, and they have it because they have special players that they have to work with and they get to work with. Beatrice, one of those, she draws the yellow card. Delgado just having to, to tug on the shirt, tug on the arm to keep Beatrice from going on. And we can see that that Brazil is having success up that left flank. Mariana Delgado, just one cap for the Argentine national team. able to get it out into touch at Delgado into the book you mentioned just her second cap this is her first start for Argentina it, it's an Argentinian team that is far less experienced certainly than Brazil but Brazil has been unable to break through through 20 minutes Beatrice again causing problems Cometti has to play it out for another Brazilian corner. So often we think of Cristiani when we think of who's the most dangerous weapon for Brazil in the air. But Rafaele, number four, as well as Tainara, their two center backs, are quality targets and often come up from the back line. Rafaele, a former striker at Ole Miss, better college ball in this day. She couldn't get to it. Davinia does, and it is off the post. The closest that Brazil has come to Binha inches away from an opener. Well, Davinia finds herself open and just a little bit move of movement. I love her starting position here because she's out of the line of sight of that defender. She darts in and this one is just a whisker wide. That's a quality opportunity and contact, and it really comes from kind of sitting in that blind spot of the defender and then darting in front of her, being the first to the ball on that quality service from Marta. Benitez as well to get around a few Brazilians and play it through for Sole Jaimes and Lini well off her line. She had to get there and does. Otherwise, Jaimes would have been through. How about that from Lorena Benitez, though? Very creative, very skillful. She actually played futsal, which is in part, we saw some of that on display right there. And Sole Jaimes, just a little bit behind that one. Alini doing well to come off of her line. If that ball is a little bit wider, perhaps Jaimes gets there first. Now, Lorena Benitez, we saw the skill in the midfield. A 22-year-old plays for Boca Juniors, who are the champions now of of Argentina. Growing up, she had to pretend to be a boy to play in neighborhood tournaments. Her teammates would call her Lorenzo. Her name is Lorena. She had to take out her earrings. She had a fake ID just so she could play in those neighborhood tournaments. Finally, at 11 years old, she joined a women's team. She made her first division debut at 14 years old. She's an example of the growth of the game in Argentina, where the steps kind of still need to be taken uh, and, and where it is going. She said herself that it's coming on in leaps and bounds, especially after the World Cup. She noticed a big change in the country uh, there. And uh, what a player she is. I know getting interest from NWSL teams, she was considered one of, if not the best player in the Argentinian league this past season. And we saw her skill on display in this first half. Now Rodriguez. Sophia Braun wasn't making the run. Rosso defending. Only as far as Marta. Here she comes, taken away by Benitez. Couple players still.
all down, including Marta. And Augustina Barroso, the other. We see a little bit of the awkward contact and the momentum of Marta just takes her into the leg of Barroso here. Barroso falling awkwardly. Barroso plays in Brazil for Palmeiras. She's teammates with three members of this Brazilian roster. Shu and Tainara, and concern for her, concern of course for Marta, Brazil's captain. Six time FIFA Player of the Year. The all time World Cup leading goal scorer, 17 goals. One of two women or men to score at five World Cups. The other, Christine Sinclair. She's playing in her home stadium as well. She's been a member of the Orlando Pride in the NWSL since 2017. Will be comfortable playing these three matches at Exploria Stadium. And she looks good to return. I'm thinking about what I want to see out of Brazil for the next 20 minutes here in the remainder of the first half. And as you've mentioned, the possession has certainly been in favor of Brazil, but I think their speed of play can improve particularly out of the back. The back line for Brazil isn't being pressured, and so they could take two, three, four touches. But when they take those four touches, it really closes down the passing channels that are available to the midfielders and the, the forwards in front of them. So how can that back line play more quickly as we see there? Tamiris, can she get that one ball and then play it forward? Looking for Beatriz. Going behind Delgado. Beatriz going through Delgado and being called for the foul. Delgado does well to put her body simply in between the ball and Beatrice. And Beatrice has to do better there. I mean, there's no need to foul Delgado. It's basically a get-out-of-jail-free card, right? She, she can put the ball down, and now Argentina, easy to build possession out of the back. I'd like to see Beatrice just hold her up there, have a little bit more patience, and force Delgado to do something with the ball while her back is faced in the direction that she actually wants to proceed. Giveaway. Can Brazil take advantage? A shot from Tabinha was blocked. Now high miss for Argentina. It's a back from Uber. Braun to Sole Heimitz. Shamila Rodriguez looking for Sole Jaimes and it's just out of her reach. It wasn't a bad ball from Rodriguez. Jaimes couldn't handle it. Argentina doing well, particularly on this left flank, and I like Shamila Rodriguez looking up, trying to find Jaimes. I would have preferred that ball on the ground. And on the flip side, Brazil, their back line to me is dropping too deep. They need to decide when they need to drop and then pick and choose the moments in between them when they can step forward and keep the game condensed. They cannot allow Sole Jaime, Shamila Rodriguez, Lorena Benitez to have the time on the ball right on that border between the midfield third and the attacking third that they've had early on in this game. You know, about 30 minutes in, if you're Carlos Barrelo, and you've got to be pleased, I would imagine, with where this game is at. Meanwhile, if you're Brazil, at what point does frustration start to set in? Last time these two teams played, it was Pia Sundaga's first game. It was won 5 0 by Brazil. It wasn't particularly close. And Brazil has been unable to find those opportunities so far today, though. Here they come. This might be a big chance for Brazil. Will it be a penalty? It is. Katja Koroleva points to the spot. No hesitation. And about 30 minutes in, it will be Brazil with a chance to take a lead. And the referee gets this one right. 
Brazil does well to get into the box, clearly inside the box, and, and to me, she impedes the progress of the player, and then again, their feet get tangled up. Brazil goes down. Easy decision for me. Penalty for Brazil. Adriana making that big run to draw the penalty. Solana Pereira against Marta. 108 goals for her country. 109 now. Marta opens the scoring from the spot. Brazil takes a 1-0 lead over their rivals, Argentina. Sonhaga told us yesterday that she wants to see some great goals. I don't know if this was a great goal, but you know what? All goals are beautiful when you're playing against your rival and it's tied and you're trying to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net when you've had a few opportunities. Pereira, she almost gets down quick enough to stop this one, but this is why you hit balls with power from the penalty spot. This is why you strike it rather than place it. It squeaks underneath the goalkeeper and 109 for Marta. Marta scoring in her home stadium, and now that the task for Argentina a little bit taller, with Brazil getting their breakthrough. Rodriguez does well to get around Chu, quite ambitious from her on the left foot. And she has been the bright spot, one of the bright spots for Argentina in the attack today. Meanwhile, Danielle for Brazil, what is getting that goal to? Uh, for them in a game like this? I think it builds a little bit of confidence. I mean, I know when you, when you talk to coaches about a tournament like this, they're looking for the quality of play as they're looking ahead towards the Olympics and they're looking to prepare their players. But don't kid yourself. You always want to win. You're always looking to try to put the ball in the back of the net, particularly against a rival. So I think this continues to build a little bit of confidence for Brazil. And we'll see if Argentina can really stop the momentum that Brazil has been seemingly building as of late or if Brazil can really capitalize upon it. Dabinia well offside. Hubert <laughs> able to turn. Sofia Braun. Benitez, big switch, looking for Rodriguez. She's not able to get there. I like that decision, though, by Benitez there. 1v1 opportunity, opportunity for Rodriguez and a change of point. A lot of yellow jerseys condensed on that far side of the field. If Benitez can serve that ball and get Rodriguez faced up 1v1, I think there's an opportunity there for Argentina. Here is Benitez, recovering for Argentina. Benitez again. Delgado to Sofia Braun, makes it to Hymas. Uber just popping it. High into the air. Brazil is going to be able to get it down and deal with it. And Delgado. She's on a yellow. Has to be careful taking out Marta. That's exactly right, Jake. She's got to be careful there. Clearly a late foul, and again, I mean, to me, that's borderline yellow. It really is. You can see the referee having a conversation with her. Only a conversation from Katja Korleva. Let's bring in Fox Sports Rules Analyst Dr. Joe Macknick. Dr. Joe, what do you think? Second yellow? Should it have been? Well, you know, referees work hard to finish a game with 11 players on each side. And when a player already has a yellow card, you, you could see the 
the referee talked with the player at length saying pretty much this is your last foul. Uh, if, if she hadn't had a yellow card originally, that certainly would have been her first. So Delgado stays on the field, still 11 v 11, on thin ice, so to speak. So if I'm Marta, I am running at Delgado all day for the next 65 minutes. I'm going to continue to put her under pressure. It is a big task. It already was for the 28-year-old Marina Delgado in her first start for Argentina. The only other cap came on November 7, 2019, a friendly against Paraguay. She got nine minutes off the bench in that match. Plays domestically in Argentina for Wire Kisa, which is one of the big clubs in the women's league in Argentina. Face today with defending maybe the best player in the world in Marta. Clarissa Uber, 36 years old. She's the only player on this roster that appeared in the 2003 and 2007 World Cups for Argentina. It was 12 years after the 2007 World Cup until Argentina would make their next World Cup in 2019. Argentina, as far as history, in a far different spot than the other three teams in the She Believes tournament. They've only been to the World Cup three times. They lost all their matches in 2003 and 2007, earned their first points in 2019 by pulling off a surprising draw against Japan in their first match, a scoreless draw, and then a thrilling comeback in the final match of the group stage, 3-3 three three against Scotland. that kept their hopes of advancing alive, hopes that would be dashed in the upcoming days. And we're just generally behind where, where these other countries are in this tournament. The national team is, is that kind of a difficult evolution in history to get where it is now. It was inactive for 18 months in 2015 and 2017. Players went on strike in 2017. Things improved, conditions improved leading into the 2019 World Cup and seemingly have continued to. Meanwhile, Pia Suntaga in Brazil managing a, a, a far different women's soccer culture. A team that has been one of the world's best for decades and is trying to continue to be big run from Dabinia. And it's broken up at the end. Well, you talked about it, Jake, and it's really been a, an on and off and hot and cold kind of moments throughout the decades for Argentina. But they certainly are making progress, and I do think it says something about the women's game that Argentina ranked 31 in the world playing against a team like Brazil can continue to com compete. I don't know that we would have had that conversation 10, 15 years ago that 31 and 8 or um, a 31 and a 1, as, we as we'll see later in this tournament, can can have a competitive match consistently. I think one of the challenges in particular for Argentina is that they've had their coach, Carlos Borrello, since 1998, and it is time for a change. He can be a great coach, sure, but over 20, or over 20, what, three years is too long for a national team head coach, and you see countries like Brazil making the change from Vidal to Pia Sinhaga. You see the same conversation happening in Spain, and those teams are continuing to move forward. So we take a look here. It's just a little bit of a slip ball. That ball doesn't work because it's too central, but I like that combination play. And Pia told us yesterday she's looking for that tightness, that chemistry, looking to get the players from Brazil of the same mind when they are on attack. She said, I'm happy if it's the wrong decision, but if both players make the wrong decision together, that is progress. And that's part of what she's looking for in this tournament as they progress towards the Olympics this summer. And there was Carlos Barrio who... Danielle was talking about has managed Argentina at all of their World Cups. And that, that's where a lot of the disagreement comes from Estefania Benini, their, their star player, and a couple of the other big-time players that they want to change. They think it's time. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a cultural reason. It's a resources reason. It's also just strictly kind of a, a tactical a soccer reason that they want to change in, in the technical staff. They haven't gotten it. Uh, they're not in the squad, and Carlos Borrell is still there, still managing, and still calling the shots for Argentina. Well, and it, 
it makes you wonder, is the Federation not paying attention? Is the Federation not investing in younger coaches that could come up and replace him? Or are they not willing to invest in a foreign coach and, and bring him or her to the table? So I understand that frustration. Uh, and I think that progress in the women's game looks different in different places in the world. That's what it looks like in Argentina. We talk about the equal pay discussion here in the United States. We've talked about um, how Brazil is making changes to its, its uniform and wearing stars on the uniform different from the men. So it looks different at different places. There's De Pina clipping it for Marta. De Pina running at a player one-on-one -on -one is always salivating and uh, Brazil, though, nothing will come from it. As Pereira keeps it from being a corner. There's something you mentioned there, Danielle, that it is really interesting in the lead-up uh, to this match and over the past few months in Brazil is, is that they've had the stars taken off the crest above their kit. They had for, for years and decades worn the five stars above the Brazilian crest, uh, each star commemorating, signifying a World Cup win but by the men. So basically, the jerseys mirrored the Brazilian men's jerseys, and the Brazilian women didn't want those stars on the kit because they hadn't earned them. They, they were the men's stars. They said they're proud of that. They're proud of the, the soccer history on the men's side, of course, in their country. Uh, but they wanted to earn their own star. Alini, starting in goal tonight, told us yesterday, when we look at the crest, we want to put our star there. Having those stars off the crest has given them more motivation every day to get to the top, to, to win a World Cup, which Brazil has not done. And they now uh, kind of having, having, for the first time, their own custom kits in a way, as you see on Raffaele, no longer the five stars of the men above the crest. A corner kick now for Argentina, their first of the match. It comes in the 41st minute. Still just 1-0. And a chance... Sole Hymas, a big target. As that was on frame, and Alini had to scramble back to keep that from being an Olympico. Alini does well. Easily read. Nice and secure. Played her college soccer, UCF, University of Central Florida under former U.S. Women's International Amanda Cromwell. Also had the chance to coach alongside her at UCLA. Yeah, really an incredible story. We'll get to it in a moment. Argentina's going to make a couple changes. Wait there, wait there. Till she uh, comes before halftime, Sofia Braun, a junior from Gonzaga, is going to come out of the match. She's from Beaverton, Oregon, getting to play in her home country. She comes off, and Mariana La Roquette, who started all three matches at the World Cup, will come on. And the other change is going to be up top, Sole Hymas. Their strong, tall target striker comes out of the match, and Shael Oviedo is going to come on for her. Six substitutions allowed at the She Believes Cup, uh, and, and in addition, possible concussion substitutions as well. We'll talk more about that if it comes up, but Danielle, two subs right before halftime from Carlos Pirello. Yeah, I mean, Mariana uh, Lero cut veteran player for Argentina actually was surprised that she didn't get the starting nod. It was good to see Sofia Braun in the match. I don't think she really had the chance to make her mark. We didn't talk about her very much. So still some time and development for the youngster out of Gonzaga University. And then Jael Oviedo, she's somebody who came off of the bench in the World Cup, so has some experience, hasn't been a regular starter for Carlos Borello. But again, we bring in another experienced player at the center of attack, but a very different player, somebody who wants the ball more to their feet, not maybe as much of a target as Soleil Jaimez was. Now Oviedo, 28-year-old, plays in Colombia. La Roquette, a new signing for Kansas City in NWSL. The new franchise just moved from Utah, or started from the, what are the Utah Royals? And the first international signing for Casey NWSL. Played all three matches at the World Cup, had two goals at at the Copa America. Spent last year in Norway after previous time in Argentina. And she provides some experience coming into the match. And another look up top with Oviedo. Marta 
taking it away from Uber and then drawing a foul. I think Uber thought it was going out into touch. Marta had other ideas. And it'll be a restart for Brazil. Marta really continuing to force to force Uber to defend, defend, defend. How often have we seen number eight for Argentina running back towards her own goal when she's really playing that wide right winger position? A shoot for Brazil. It will be another penalty. No. Shoe went down. And Kachakoraleva held her whistle. Now Adriana, who drew the first penalty for Brazil today. Taken away by Argentina. Oviedo on the ball for the first time. Delgado couldn't handle it. The fourth official. Minimum two minutes of added time in the first half. Danielle, as we head towards the end of this first half, what have you made of the first 45? Well, I'm thinking about what I would say to each of my teams at halftime. And if I'm Pia, I like their shape defensively, but I think their pressure needs to be tighter. I think in the midfield, can Julia and Adriana make a little bit more of a mark? Can they play through them better? And how in attack can Brazil look to combine more quickly and effectively through their speed of play and combination play? For Argentina, I think they've done a pretty good job structurally uh, and with their shape in the back. I think their speed of play can continue to improve. And I think they need to continue to find a way when um, Shayel Rodriguez gets the ball. Can they look to get numbers around her so she can combine and attack? Oh, excuse me, Jamila Rodriguez. She's been at least the focal point, the bright point uh, of Argentina's attack in this first half. And a look for Oviedo. It's handled by Tainara. Elini played her college ball in Orlando at Central Florida. Sending it towards midfield. Here's Benitez for Argentina. Here's Jamila Rodriguez. She couldn't get the first touch right. Still there, though. Trying to get around Camila. Unable to. Oh, skill. The sauce from Tabinha. And again, such an exciting player. Even, what, 80 yards from the goal she's trying to score on. is up for offside. And now I think the halftime whistle. Brazil getting its goal through Marta. A penalty kick in the 30th minute, but only one in the first half against their rivals, Argentina. Even have a balance between urgency and then getting numbers around the ball. Can they play a little bit more of that cat and mouse game? Can they develop strategically and how they're wanting to attack, uh, provide a, a varied attack against Argentina? It was a little bit predictable up that left flank. Can they do the same on the right side? Marta was dominating that left flank at times as she has so often in her career. The captain for Brazil giving instruction, giving encouragement. Andresinha will come into the match. She'll be quite familiar with playing in Orlando. Spent five seasons in the NWSL. Bruna Benitz uh, getting ready or will come on as well as Brazil and Pia Suntaga make a few changes at halftime. We saw Carlos Barrela for Argentina make two subs just before the first half whistle. Looks like a change in goal as well. With Leticia coming on for Elini. The 
Concha Koraleva gets us underway in the second half. Brazil and Argentina, the opening match of the She Believes Cup. Brazil with a 1-0 lead as we begin the second half from Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Immediately, it's Marta on the ball for Brazil. To me, when I'm trying to, to, to put words to my feelings around Brazil and how they played in the first half. It's really seemingly that like they were thinking a lot and you can it, it seemed to me that they're trying to do and implement some of the new strategies that Pia is perhaps trying to implement, but because they're thinking about it, it's not that free-flowing style yet. And hopefully with time for Brazil, they'll be able to integrate that organization, integrate that structure and, and what Pia Suntag is trying to bring without losing that flair and that freedom that we've become so accustomed to seeing from Brazil when they're at their best. You, three, you see the three substitutes for Brazil, Bruna Benitz, Andresinha, and Leticia. Coming on for Tamiris, Alini, and Julia. Camila has taken up the left back position for Brazil with Bruna Benitz playing at right back. Or rather, it's center back as we will sort out the, the tactical changes from Pia Suntaga. There is Bruna, the, the substitute. Now, well, Lorena Benitez. Looking for Mar Marina La Roquette and cleared away by Brazil. Now Marta. Beatriz has Dabinha. Dabinha is through. The flag has stayed down and Dabinha has doubled Brazil's lead two minutes into the second half. I love this little slip pass. And I love the movement of Dabinia right here. This is what you want to see when you're playing a two front. You want to see combination play between your two forwards. Marta finds Beatrice to her feet. And then Dabinia does well to stay on side, cut in front of her defender. And then just a simple pass between the two forwards. Dabinia finishing against the momentum of Pereira as she dives to her left. Well done by Brazil. You'd love to see when a team coming right out of the locker room can implement what the coach said. They can get off on the front foot just as we saw Brazil do, what, three minutes here into the second half. Maybe that's that beautiful goal that Pia Suntaga told us she wanted to see from Brazil in this tournament. It was beautiful, but I feel like Brazil has more beautiful in them. I feel like we might see some even more special goals throughout the course of this tournament by the Brazilians. That's the 11th goal for De Pina since Pia Sundaga took over as head coach. In 2019, she has flourished under Pia Sundaga. She has continued the form that NWSL fans are used uh, to seeing her in. the chance to, to speak with Heather O'Reilly who used to play with Dabinia for the North Carolina Courage and she said that she's just continued to evolve, continued to grow defensively, her pressure is good and after she wins the ball she's very good at driving forward, going forward and really kind of putting her foot on the gas. She's a quiet player, but that, um, that tenacity seems to be coming out more and more, and perhaps playing alongside players like Heather O'Reilly is what's continued to help bring it out of her. The sir, third substitution for Argentina as Valentina Camara comes on for Marina Delgado. Delgado had a tough assignment defending Marta. Here's a look at how close that was. And you love it. Like, you can see her really fighting to hold her run and dip back deeper into, into the midfield to ensure that she isn't offside. She just continues to put herself in good positions and put herself, give herself the opportunity to score. Andresinha. Looking for a shoe well off her line is Pereira. Rodriguez 
chance as well to turn for Argentina. Still Shamila Rodriguez draws the foul. And Trisina, the guilty party. She doesn't think it's a foul. It's a foul, but it's a smart foul. If you don't slow Jamila Rodriguez there, down right there, she's going to be inside the box driving towards goal. Andresinha now with Corinthians in Brazil. Spent 2018 and 2019 with the Portland Thorns. Three seasons before that with the Houston Dash and the NWSA. Oh, it's Lorena Benitez and Jamila Rodriguez over it for Argentina. Lee Rodriguez to serve. It's handled by Brazil. Vanessa <laughs> Santana wearing the armband for Argentina. Plays in Spain, one of five on this Argentinian roster that play in Spain. I do think that's part of the development and growth for Argentina. You're starting to see more and more players play their professional ball over in Europe or in China as well. But getting experience outside of Argentina and the opportunities to train at elite levels and get access to, to more than they've been afforded in their country, I think, is an important piece and how they're going to progress. And it seems like that's been a big part of the fight from these Argentinian women to improve the quality of the game, improve the conditions of the game in Argentina. As the Pina looks for Beatrice, it's handled by Pereira. Delilah Ippolito was on the bench for Argentina today, who is one of their bright young stars. She's 18 years old. She plays for Juventus. She said that she had no idea growing up, uh, and really up until the Women's World Cup in 2019, had no idea what soccer was like in Europe, how much women get paid, what it meant uh, to actually make a living from the sport. That wasn't something that she really knew about growing up and, and playing in Argentina. Now she does know that. Now she realizes that. And, and it seems like as her and, and and other players in the national team have these experiences in Europe and understand uh, what the quality of, of women's soccer is in other places um, in the world that, that it, it kind of increases their fight for wanting that in their own country of Argentina. The Argentinian League, as we mentioned, just went fully professional in 2019. Still, though, the requirement is just 12 players on professional contracts. There's still a ways to go. As here comes Adriana. She is through for Brazil, and she has made a three. Adriana drew a penalty in the first half. Now she gets her goal. And it's 3-0. When Pia Sundaga talks about wanting to bring organization to attack, this is what she's talking about. She's wanting to get numbers around the ball and play and combine between the forward line and the midfield line. Look at this little combination play and the movement of Adriana there to just... Take that run straight from the center of the park. Perfectly played ball by Dabinia. Continuing to show the depth that she brings to this team. Now turning provider after having scored in the 48th minute. I like that combination between midfield and forward. Not just the combination between two forwards, but now bringing in that second layer, that, that layer of midfield, adds another bit of sophistication to the way that Brazil can attack. Argentina battling and Marina La Roquette wins it. Yeah. Newly signed to Kansas City in the NWSL.
Mariana Larocat. She's feisty. I like her. I think she's going to do well in the National Women's Soccer League for Kansas City. She's very active, sometimes a flair for the dramatic, but I love that about her. Lorena Benitez wow. flipping it in. It was, you know, Dean was there looking for Barroso, I think, but ended up going straight to Lechicia. Yeah, the service for Argentina out of Benitez on this set piece and a one just a few moments ago on the far side of the pitch just hasn't been good enough. When you're down three goals to zero, when you're looking to find a way back into the game, set pieces become even more critical, and the set piece is useless if the service isn't there. Adriana to Binha on it for Brazil, now Marta. Flipping it uh, towards Beatrice, she did not hit it right. Rare from Marta, and it's Pereira who's able to handle. One of the things that's different for Brazil here in the second half is that their pressure has been higher up the pitch. I talked about in the first half liking their structure, but thinking that they needed to get better pressure on the ball, and it's been much, much better in the second half. Santana called for the foul. And, uh, Brazil goes quickly. Here's Shu. Bounces awkwardly, and Pereira is able to handle. continuing to be on that front foot and I think that's smart to continue to find ways to put Solana Pereira under pressure this is just her seventh cap for Argentina we haven't talked about it but their their typical starting goalkeeper Vanina Correa, Correa unable to make the trip to the United States dealing with COVID protocol in Spain has continued to continue to test positive so Spain did not allow her to leave the country, but I think back to the World Cup, particularly the game that Argentina played against England and Correa coming up just huge time and time again in that match in particular. She was a star for them in 2019, Vanina Correa. At first tested positive for COVID about a month ago and continues to test positive. So unable to travel because of COVID protocols. The country of Spain actually wouldn't let her travel. Here comes Argentina. Rafaeli for Brazil. So it's Pereira who, who's getting the start and goal. She kind of seems to be like, like she is next up. This is her seventh start, uh, which she, her seventh cap rather. She has been Correa's backup. She has come off the bench for her a few times in recent friendlies. So some confidence with her feet there. She's the only goalkeeper other than Vanina Correa to play since that 2019 World Cup. And Lorena, uh, Lorena Bonita, uh, Benitez is down for Argentina. That will be a concern for them. And Carlos Borrello. She appears to be okay. 22-year-old who plays for Boca Juniors led them to... Argentinian League title on January 19th in its first season as a fully professional league. It started in, in the fall of 2019, but took until, because of the pandemic, took until just about a month ago to actually finish. The final there was what you'd expect in Argentinian soccer. It was Boca Juniors River Plate. Boca Juniors 7-0 winners. And seven members from that team are with this Argentinian team here at the She Believes Cup. One of them is Shamila Rodriguez on the ball now. Across my make it to La Roquette on the back post. It does, and it is in! Mariana La Roquette getting a goal for Argentina. They pulled one back. It's 3-1. to one. Shamila Rodriguez on that left flick, as you've mentioned, Jake, has been the weapon time and time again. This time, her delivery is what allows La Roquette and allows Argentina to get back into this. Just a 
ton of green space and then has the presence of mind to get her head up, serve it to the back post. The marking by number 18, Camila, isn't tight enough and Lara Katz able to just sneak that in. She doesn't need a ton of power because it's perfectly placed just inside that far post. She heads it back across the face of the goal using the momentum of Leticia against her. Just a quality clinical finish with her head by Lara Katz and a very good service from Shamila Rodriguez, who has been, for me, the player for Argentina to watch in this game. Well, they'll enjoy that finish in Kansas City as well. The first international signing for Kansas City NWSL. Marina La Roquette getting Argentina on the scoreboard in the She Believes Cup. And here's Camila for Brazil, who wins a throw. Marroquette scored 45 goals in the 2017-2018 season with Wire Kisa. She won the Golden Boot of the Argentinian League, which at that point was not fully professional. Now, after spending a year in Norway, making the move to NWSL. And take another look back at the goal here. Just perfectly placed. And you, you think this isn't a rivalry? Yes, Argentina is down three to one now. But hey, I'm thinking back almost and having having flashes of that game of the World Cup in Scotland where they were down three to zero to Scotland. Argentina is a team that continues to fight, that never says die. And we'll see what they can try to pull off here in the next 29 minutes. A couple players down in pain. Yeah, it was later. And this, the, the three-goal comeback against Scotland in the final 20 minutes of that match. Raffaele and Uber, the two players that collided. And always tough to see Raffaele when she goes down. She suffered an injury before the World Cup, which kept her out of that roster. But Pia told us that she's somebody who really can be special and perhaps like the heart of this back line and this team for Brazil. Over the next five months, it's really a matter of trying to figure out who that center pairing, center back pairing is going to be, who's going to be playing alongside her. We saw in the first half it was Tainara, here in the second half, Bruna. So Pia... Perhaps looking at some experimentation, trying to make some decisions about who are going to be the best fit looking ahead towards the Tokyo Olympic Games. Raffaele back to her feet, as is Uber. Now Marta up for Brazil. Adriana trying to get around Cometti. He's able to see it out for a goal kick. Adriana has impressed me in the center of the park for Brazil. So often when you think of that that key central midfielder for Brazil, you think Formiga. And as you mentioned, Jake, earlier, she is not here in this tournament because she is back in Paris. PSG did not release her to participate here in the She Believes Cup. So a real opportunity for players in the center of the park to try to prove to Pia that they deserve to be on the pitch, that they deserve a spot on this Olympic roster. And I think Adriana is certainly making a case for herself here today. The FIFA rules allowed PSG to deny the release of Formiga, also Luana, uh, because they would have been subject to a seven-day quarantine when they came back into the country, back into France. This is a FIFA window, so clubs are required to release players, uh, but new rules during the pandemic are such that if there's a mandated quarantine of at least five days when the player were to return to their country, then the club doesn't have to release them, and PSG chose not to release Formiga and Luana. Same with Alana Cook uh, for the United States who is staying in France. But an opportunity, as you mentioned, and, and Pia Sundaga told us that she has to identify that next generation. Formiga's 42, Marta is turning 35 tomorrow. Cristiani, who we haven't seen yet today, but is on the bench, she's 35. They need to identify who's going to be next. Adriana, just 24, and she has made an impact today. Another player who missed the World Cup, the last World Cup, 
with a knee injury. She was included on the squad and then had to be replaced by Luana the day uh, after their official squad was released because of injury. And there is a player down for Brazil. It is Shu. You see the contact here between Shu and Romina Nunez. Shu, to me, somebody I'd like to see again. I don't think she has stood out a ton in the first 65 minutes of this game, but didn't make any poor decisions either. So to me, I'll be eager to see how she, she performs against higher and tougher competition in Canada or the United States later on in this tournament. And I think that's a challenge that a lot of these coaches have. Uh, Pia, Bev Priestman, same for Vlatko Andonovsky. All of these teams or these three teams that are going to the Olympics, you're looking for answers. And a no is just as good as a yes. But when you continue to remain unsure heading into a, a tournament like the Olympics five months, three months in, you're really trying to, to determine, is this player ready right now? And, and, and can we include her? Does she give us what we need? Or is she not good enough? Or maybe yet it isn't her time. Could be a concern for Shu as she looks like she's going to have to be stretchered off. 30-year-old, she's turning 31 on February 27th, so in just over a week. Has had a long career, mostly in Brazil. She's played overseas a bit, South Korea, Denmark, and China. This is her 20th cap for Brazil. And she will leave in quite a bit of pain, it appears. Ivana Vana Shu. Yes, yes. You going for her? We may have got a little listen into who's going to come on, and it, it might be Ivana and Cristiani. This uh, is a symbolic maybe moment with these two players coming on, the old generation and the new generation for the Brazilians. Cristiani will come on for Beatriz. 96 goals. Four goals in the World Cup. She's played in five World Cups, four Olympics. And now Ivana, a 19-year-old, plays for Manchester United. She's coming on for shoot. She has dual eligibility. She was born in Brazil. She was raised in Germany. She's been a German youth international. But now she's being pursued by the Brazilian. She's making her Brazil debut. And we talked to Pia Suntaga about this. And this is... Uh, it, it, it's a point of emphasis from the Brazilians. They don't want another Katarina Macario situation. They don't want to let dual nationals go, uh, as happened with, with Macario, who will be starring, uh, or has already been starring for the United States, who we will see for the United States at 7 o'clock tonight against Canada. She is part of this roster in the She Believes Cup. When we asked Pia about Katarina Macario, she said, she, you know, once she got the job in Brazil, she called her contacts, Mark Kaporian in the United States, and asked about her. She connected to, to Kat Macario and said, hey, what's, what's your deal? And Macario said, sorry, Pia, I'm American. And Pia promptly then reminded us that how lucky we are as Americans to have a player like Katarina Macario in our midst. And Pia said she didn't really push it, right? She said, okay, good luck. I hope you have a great career. <laughs> But Brazil now, the Federation, again, they're, they're making an emphasis for that not to happen again. They're actually holding uh, a combine of sorts in Orlando on Friday for anybody that lives in North America that has dual eligibility, people of, of the age between 12 and 20. So they're looking for kind of that next generation players who might have Brazilian eligibility who aren't on their radar to try to identify them. They're planning similar events in Dallas, Los Angeles, New York, and in Europe, probably in Portugal. They have a couple players like that on this roster in Ivana, who we're seeing in the match, and Giovanna. Meanwhile, Argentina will make a change. They'll take out their captain, Vanessa Santana, and they'll bring on a 20-year-old, Diana Falfan, as Santana passes the armband to Aldana Cometti. Just as we see Ivana, the youngster, come in for Brazil. Another youngster for Argentina, Diana Falfan. This is just her fourth cap. So, again, as Pia trying to get some answers about young players, Carlos Borrello, 
despite not being a participant in the Olympics, but looking ahead towards 2022 and the Copa America and World Cup qualifying for Argentina, taking a little bit of the same tact in terms of trying to, to get a better pulse on some of the younger players. Who will be the future for Argentina? How can they progress toward 2022 and ensure that they make back-to-back -back uh, World Cup, or they are back-to-back -back World Cup participants? in 2019 and 23, just as they were so long ago in 03 and 07. And yeah, that qualifying will happen at next year's Copa America. And they have one of those players on the bench. We mentioned her earlier, Delilah Ippolito for Juventus, an 18-year-old. Hope to see her in this tournament. Here's Marta trying to get it through to Dabinia, maybe Cristiani has broken up by Argentina. Benitez looking for Rodriguez. seems to me that Brazil is attacking slightly more centrally than I feel like I've seen them do in the past. I, I often recall this wide, expansive shape where you'll see Marta on the touchline, you'll see a, a, a right midfielder all the way wide as well, and yet this time I see those players cutting in a little bit more centrally. We saw Shu do it, perhaps we'll see Ivana as well, Marta drifting into the middle of the park. Perhaps that's something that Pia is trying to implement and getting numbers around the ball so these players can look to combine and support each other. But it's, 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 it's touchy, it's, it's delicate. You want to attack centrally so then it opens up the width. And then you want to exploit that space and use the width and create more passing channels centrally. So you're constantly looking to go back and forth over the course of 90 minutes so you can open up chances in front of goal. Strong from Camila, who then gets around Benitez and plays it behind Cristiani. Falfon <laughs> gives it away to Pinino. Andresino from distance. Pereira makes the save and is able to get back on it. called for the foul. We take a look here on Justinia, just getting a little bit of the space she needs and strikes it very well. You're always looking, if you can, to keep it nice and low and try to get that ball to bounce right before it gets to the goalkeeper. It's so hard when it comes off that short hop. The goalkeeper, do you decide and try to dive forward, get it before it bounces? wait for it to come up and make sure you can handle it and get on top of it. Pereira does well there to make sure she deflects that one. Cristiani unfortunately not following up because Pereira did not hang on to it. Cristiani could have potentially been able to knock in that deflection. Marta trying to flick it over. Camara was unable to. Here's a player down for Brazil. They'll put the ball out of play. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, they're coming, they're coming. Yeah, jog on out there, guys. Thank you. It's a yellow throw and green ones go out. And it's Adriana, who has been a bright spot for Brazil today, Danielle. Has a drawn penalty and has their third goal. I really like the way she's driven out of midfield, particularly in the second half. But as you mentioned, getting up that left flank, earning the penalty kick in the first half. She's done well for me in this game and in proving that she deserves to, to be there. And I think Pia Suntag has got to give her, continue to give her a, a solid look in the center of the park for Brazil. So Lila Ippolito coming into the match. Here's another look at what happened with Adriana. Not much contact there. It's clearly going down before she runs in to Falfan. Missed the World Cup with an injury. You know, Any time she takes a knock, it's 
concerning. Appears to be okay, though. And that substitution, Delilah Ippolito, you see her in the middle of your screen right now, 18-year-old coming on for the 36-year-old Clarissa Ruber. Ippolito, the youngest Argentine women to play in a World Cup at 17 years old. She joined Juventus last year, the first Argentine woman to play in Italy. She thought her agent was messing with her when Juventus wanted her. Uh, she didn't believe it. That now she's there. Uh, she said she's learning so much, as we mentioned earlier, about the sport and, and what it's like, what women's soccer is like in Europe. After the World Cup, where she uh, played, uh, debuted, and, and had an assist in that three to one, uh, th three to make it three to one, and that three to three comeback against Scotland. After that, her first club named their stadium after her, making her the first Argentine woman to receive that honor as Adriana is going to have to come out of the match for Brazil, and Jay-Z is going to come on for her. So Adriana leaves because of the injury. Ippolito said that when she grew up, she wanted to play alongside Lionel Messi at Barcelona. That was her dream. But now she gets hundreds of messages on social media from girls who want to be like her. And she said she understands that brings with it a certain responsibility. She has to present a good image while remaining true to herself, and she hopes to be able to do that. And again, representative of how the game is changing in Argentina. Ippolito is certainly somebody who's creative going forward. And I think she has a big opportunity to fill the role of a Stefania Benini in that creative playmaking position if she can continue to develop and grow in that capacity. There's a 22-year-old Jay-Z into the match for Brazil, was the youngest player on their World Cup team in 2019. And two appearances. Argentina with a corner now. Shamila Rodriguez will take it. She was allowed to take it, yet again it is forcing the Brazilian goalkeeper to catch close to her line, Leticia, up to the task. Just the second corner of the day for Argentina, and now here comes Brazil and JC into the middle, but scooped up by Pereira. Suntaga, former manager of the United States. She will see her former team later in this tournament on Sunday. But today, uh, tonight, the United States begin their 2021 She Believes Cup against their rivals, Canada, 7 p.m. right here on Fox Sports 1. JP Della Camera and Ali Wagner will have the call. U.S. Soccer getting us ready for that. Here we go again tonight. Such a great rivalry. United States and Canada another meeting coming up uh, just in, in about an hour's time a little over that seven o'clock tonight sometimes that's the only way you can stop Marta <laughs> <laughs> Marta with a goal tonight the 109th of her Brazilian career opened the scoring with a penalty kick in the 30th minute Hunter Senior with a set piece for Brazil. Cristiani. Pereira couldn't handle it, but the foul is given. Bodies everywhere. Pereira does well. Profit. Yeah, she does well right here to, to read this. You can see Cristiani hunting that ball. But Pereira's got to do better to hold on to this. Yes, she has to go through bodies. Yes, she gets bumped a little bit there. But so critical for a goalkeeper to be able to hang on to balls in, in that space. Oh, there is Cristiani. What a turn. Complaints from her. It's clear by Argentina. Bolito, the 18 year old. Oh, look to Benitez from distance. And it's wide. 
She's not afraid to hit it from distance. Lorena Benitez, she couldn't put it on frame there. We've seen the quality of Benitez's service throughout the game, but here we get a good glimpse of her movement and her vision. She's able to just make a small little run in behind the midfield of Brazil. And then her final strike lets her down in this one. That one clearly wide and spinning away. But the movement there was good, and she continues to provide bright spots for the Argentine team. She scored one from distance, not quite that deep, but from distance in the Argentinian final last month in Boca's 7-0 win over River Plate. Now Marta. Tries to get it back to Jay-Z. Marta still battling. Takes it away. She's unable to. It's still clean. Is also down on the ground. And now finally the whistle goes. The card produced. From Katja Korleva. It's to Marta. Third player in the book today, second for Brazil, joining Beatriz. You see Marta here and Barroso. But that's the, that's the yellow card right there. The swing with Marta's left foot, that's what earns her the yellow card. A little frustration, maybe. Yeah, and dangerous, right? Barroso's on the ground. ball in to Cristiani from Bruno. And how about JC and her movement? Again, just running on that diagonal run away from the ball, away from the goal, well-timed. And then how about her ability to get her hips around? Look, she lands on her shooting foot. She, all of her momentum is going to the right, but because she lands on her shooting foot, that power transfers to the ball, to the far post, well done. When Pia Sundhag told us yesterday she's looking for some beautiful goals, for me, that one, goes right to the top of the list of the four we've seen so far from Brazil. 17th goal for her in her 33rd cap. She wasn't on the initial roster, was called in when PSG wouldn't release Formiga and Luana. And she takes advantage of the opportunity as the youngest player on their 2019 World Cup team. Now plays for Madrid CFF in Spain, Club Football de Femenino. Joined Benfica in 2018 when Benfica started up a women's team in the second division in Portugal. She scored 16 goals in her first four games in what was a pretty absurd situation with Benfica needing to get promoted up, up to the first division after starting a team. And uh, her goal scoring form was incredible at that level and has continued with the national team as we are seeing today. Cristiani towards Marta. Can get there before Barroso. momentarily it was okay in the end we see the game slowing a bit we see the game starting to get stretched and you would expect that given all that we 
been dealing with in 2020, the reality that a lot of these players may not be at their peak fitness form, not having been able to, to play consistently over the past 11 months. But as you'll pot potentially hear from a lot of the U.S. players, they're feeling rested. They're feeling better than they've ever felt because they've had some time away to the, from the game to be able to rest and recover. And now it's about building that fitness back after having been rested and had that time to get those legs back after the months away. Along those lines, Argentina hasn't played as a national team in 464 days. For Brazil, it's their first of this year, of this calendar year. Benitez is down for Argentina. Yeah, you mentioned feeling good. Carly Lloyd, we talked to her yesterday, and she said she's felt as, as good as she ever has possible benefit of, of that layoff is it, look, it's, it's a break that the athletes wouldn't normally have, have had. I think that makes the decision for Vlatko Androvsky even harder. Andonovsky, excuse me, even harder. Especially in that this roster for the Olympics is only 18 players. Decision certainly more difficult as Lorena Benitez jogs off. Good sign for her and for Argentina. And their manager, Carlos Borrello. Rafaele finds Marta. It's easy for Pereira. One of the things that makes Marta so special is that she can beat you, certainly. She can, she can dribble and get behind you, but she doesn't need to beat you to be able to serve the ball. You see the quick release right there. She just gets the separation she needs, doesn't whip it across and get the cross exactly where she wants. But that's part of what makes her so dangerous, is you try to stay off of her to make sure she doesn't get in behind. But if you stay too far, she'll just take a touch and still provide a quality service with that left foot. If you can, you've got to try to force her to her right, because that's the weaker of the two. Benitez comes out, and Miriam Mishorga comes on for Argentina. Their sixth and final substitution of the game. They look direct for Oviedo, handled by Brazil. today, Danielle, about Brazil. They considered the, you know, the biggest threat to the United States in this tournament. What do you think after watching that first game? I've learned that it, it, they're in the middle of progressing. To me, it looks like they're trying things. It looks as if they're trying to implement some of the things Similar position from where Jay-Z scored her goal six minutes ago. So they're a team in my mind that's it's probably exactly where they need to be in terms of preparing for the Olympics. This game and this tournament is about trying out younger players, about experimenting, and about getting some answers if you're a Pia. And I think some of those questions potentially have been answered today. So far, I've liked Jay-Z. What she's brought coming into the match. I've liked uh, uh, Adriana. I thought she's been special. I still think there's some questions at the center back position who might play alongside Raffaele. Um, and certainly the same could be said in the goalkeeping position. Barbara, their normal number one, we didn't see at all today. And we saw Alini and Leticia. Neither were challenged incredibly, but 
some questions potentially there beginning to be answered about who the number two and maybe even who the number one will be in goal for Pia in Brazil. So now the substitution uh, happens. Mishorga coming on for Benitez, the final substitution for Argentina in this match. Meanwhile, with Argentina, Danielle, we knew that, that it's a, a different type of team there and a different part of their process, you could say, than the other three national teams at, at this tournament. What have you learned from them in their first match of Today, today I'm consistently reminded that you can't ever entirely count out Argentina. They are a team that, as you mentioned, is still maybe earlier in their process, but they are a fighter. I gotta say, when I was covering them for the World Cup, I didn't expect that much out of them, and they surprised me. And today, I'm continually being impressed by the moments they have where they're able to combine, able to get forward, able to attack. I thought Jamila Rodriguez was impressive. Benitez stood out. I think there are definitely moments to build on if you're Argentina, and You've just got to continue to find a way to be able to come together to continue to grind it out and progress. Rodriguez looked like the flag came up. forward to looking ahead to Sunday in the U.S. Brazil matchup is how Brazil is going to manage the midfield for the United States. Typically see three three man midfield for the U.S. There's JC for Brazil into the middle. It's Cristiani away from the Sorga. Now Andresinha. Brazil have one more in them in this first match that she believes. Davinha. She wanted that to get to her. Nancy Polito for Argentina. Maybe they can pull one back late. That well by Rafael. <laughs> and the nutmeg from Camila. It opened up a little bit the last minute of this match. Maybe the final movement forward of this opening match of She Believes. Bruna is there for Brazil. And the Brazilians open up the 2021 She Believes Cup with a 4-1 win over their South American rivals.